Hi, this is Puffy, and welcome to Game for the Average Man. Today's topics will be How do I know if a woman likes me? Game isn't just a group of magical words. And part two to yesterday's series How does an average man get an 8, 9, and 10? Now, last night I was uh, working side by side with a very popular content creator, my big good friend and mentor. It's complicated, and we were both doing interviews with people on the strip, and we were all both talking about a lot of different subjects pertaining to what we do out here. And he says the one thing about this uh, group of people in our corner of the YouTube streets is they teach money frame muscle gain. So don't do anything but get to the finish line. And then, and then you can meet women. And then you will make an impression on women. Once you have the clout, then, then, then you'll be happy. And he's on the same level as me. No, you must do it on the way. What that means is when you go to the gym the first time, you can't lift as much weight. And you keep going back. And you keep running. And you start eating right. And over time, not only you become stronger muscularly. L along the way, you become stronger mentally and physically. You also become a better eater. You also become a lot better things also. Well, I also believe that when it comes to meeting girls, you should do it step by step on the way. Now, I, I'm a farm preacher in code approach. Because code approach is the one thing that you actually can control. You can control the way you talk. You can control the way you interact. A woman who would swipe right on you without a second look will talk to you if you know how to talk to her. If you smell good, if your clothes are clean, if your clothes are fashionable, if you know how to use words, if you know how to be funny, you know how to be clever. Code approaching is so much more effective. That is why it's the hardest of all the techniques to meet women because it is the most effective. And if you know about anything in life, if you have to work hardest at anything, when you get done, it usually has the best outcome. Nothing that ever came easy usually is worth it. So, this is my first subject of the day. How do you know if a woman likes you? Now, this is very important to a lot of guys because, you know, I've already went over this once and I promise you this is going to be another billion part series. So I'm going to start real simple. The one I look to the most. When you see her, does she acknowledge you? Let me explain. So this is for more of a warm approach mentality than a cold approach. And this is how this works. So you know a woman in, in a sphere of your world. Let's say you are... Um, Business, a business, work setting, gym setting, church setting, etc. Any kind of setting where you see this woman and you find her physically attractive and you like her on some level. You want to go on a date with her, what have you. So, you see this woman. Does she acknowledge your existence? And if so, how? Does she say, hey Puff? Does she say, hey Puffy? Does she walk over there and does she make contact with you? And finally, does she give you hugs with going chest to chest? These are all very important things. Now, if she just says hi, that's probably all she thinks about you. But if she says hi and walks towards you to say it or waves at you, now she's interested on some level. Now, when she comes up to you, says hi, and makes body contact, now she is sexually attracted to you. <coughs> and finally, if she comes up to you every day, gives you a hug chest to chest, she's looking to get a room as soon as possible. Now, a lot of guys will get confused because they'll say, well, girls do this to me, but I've asked them out on dates, and they told me no. Well, let me explain the difference between what I just said and what you just heard. Touching trumps everything when it comes to whether a woman likes you or not. And a lot of guys will search for the touch and make the touch matter. But no, the touch must matter first. 
So, when you see the girl and you like her and she says hi, don't worry about it. If you see her and she likes you and she walks up to you and gives you a prolonged hi, now you have something interest. But during that prolonged hi, does she make contact with you? If she does, this is what you do. 1-1,000, If you can get to 5-1,000, she likes you. If the touch contains any kind of hug that she initiates, she is probably sexually attracted to you. You must understand, as all dating coaches says, it's not what a woman says, but what she does that matters. Does she give you a hug? Does she make cardi contact with you anyway? Another thing a woman will do if she is sexually attracted to you she will bring up other girls to you. She will say, oh, you just a flirt. Or, oh, that girl, you, you think you can get any girl. Or last night I was at work, and a guy who's a, a work co-worker of mine, very tall, uh, Rico Suave, good looking, and we know we have to say it. No, you know what I'm going to say. Mo, uh, got, I mean by this, but he's a, he's a tall Hispanic gentleman. You know, he's got the Latin, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, physicality in the face, goes to the gym a lot, big man, gets a lots of girls. And he was talking to this uh, 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 biracial black woman, and I was looking in their direction, but I actually wasn't looking at them. I mean, I did notice them, but I was thinking about something else. So two of the girls who work with us said, Puffy, give the man, let this man have this girl. You don't have to get at her. <laughs> and I said, I wasn't even thinking about her. I was just kind of looking in their direction, kind of going through different things in my head about what I was doing at that point in time. But the point is, is this guy, he is very good with the ladies. He's over six foot tall, goes to the gym. He's got the Rico Suave face, if you know what I mean. He, he has, you know, he has no trouble getting women attention. But even the girls in my job, because I have the reputation of a man that can go up and speak to any woman. Whether I get them or not, I get their number, that's different. But they know I will approach at all times. So they said, let him get this girl's number. And the reason why they said that, because in their minds, that I am the type of guy who can approach girls, which is also a form of pre-selection. Another time I was talking to other two other uh, females, co-workers of mine, and this beautiful black woman walks by, and I happened to no look, I noticed her, and I, but they didn't see that I saw her earlier talking to a guy who I assumed was her boyfriend, and he was about 10 feet away from her doing something else. Now, the girls didn't see that, and the girl walked away, and they said, Puffy, how come you didn't talk to her? And I explained to her, oh, I saw her earlier, she was talking to a man. But the reason why I bring this up is if women say, you go, boy, or they co-sign, it's really because they... Are sexually attracted to you also and that's another form of pre-selection so if a woman says to you you can get that girl then that means you in a lot of senses have action at her also now don't confuse and this is where guys get confused at you get that girl or I'm gonna find the perfect girl for you those are different subjects if a woman says She's going to find the perfect girl for you. She's really saying, it ain't me. <laughs> but if a woman says, hmm, you just a flirt. I know, girl, girls, all you always just flirty. Now that means she's interested. You've intrigued her. You've brought out something in her. She says, hmm, this guy has something that I'm interested in because of all the other girls being interested in him also. And that's called pre-selection, and I will do a billion-part series on that also. Next subject. Hi, this is Puffy. Welcome to Game. Part, second subject of the day. This is called, Game is not just a group of magical words. <sighs> Okay, so game is not just a group of magical words. Game is two things. T 
10%, group of magical words, 90% on how you use them. Now, most dating coaches will say, you can say this or you can say that. And a lot of times what they say is true. Now, I always say the best form of way of approaching a woman is just with what's in the situation. And that kind of sucks because you want me to say these magical words. So the magical words to approach all women of all races, all ages, all backgrounds, all religions is basically this. And this works with 100% of all women. So please listen to this. This is the only thing that will work with all women. And you can talk to any dating coach. This is the one of the few things all dating coaches on the internet, in books, etc. agree on. The one perfect way to introduce yourself to a woman is this. Hello, my name is Puffy. Insert your own name, don't use mine. That works the best. It's simple, it's to the point. And the reason why is that within 10 seconds of that introduction, she will either run for the hills, give you a polite, oh, I have a boyfriend, say, or... Keep the conversation going with this crazy response. Oh, my name is Jane Doe. Now, from that point on, you can move the conversation a hundred million different ways. And we will have a hundred million part series on that. But what I'm saying is, game is, in my opinion, just this simple. And I'm going to define game as I see it. Game is showing that every woman that you have ever been in contact with, romantically or even unromantically, is this. The luckiest day she has ever had in her life was the day that she met you. Game is this. You are the prize. You are the one. You are the one. You are Neo. You are so important. That you took time out of your day to spend with her. She will be grateful. Game is a gentleman I spoke to last night. I did a video with these two beautiful blondes that I will have posted sometime around between 5 and 7 today. And they were with this guy. Total Chad. Six plus tall. Uh, blind hair, blind white man. Uh, in shape. And the girls are 24 and 25. You'll remember this video when it airs between 5 and 7. And as it's complicated, it was recorded at first and I recorded after him. And when he was recording, I was talking to God. And he was like, yeah, you know, I met him earlier today. And I said, well, you look like you got game. I said, just remember this. Do not be act like you've never been there before. Do not be too pushy towards getting to the bedroom. But most important of all, these girls... I were very nice looking and you will give your opinion of them, but they definitely are both, I would at least, well, everybody has their opinion. I'm not going to give mine, but very nice looking women. Everybody would date them. You know how seriously you would or how high would you rate them? That's a matter of opinion. But I said, when you go out with them, this is very important. Make sure to watch what you spend. And he said, oh, yes, I know that. I would never uh, do that. And the reason why I say that is because, and this goes back to game is not just words. If you are with two beautiful women, these women are used to guys spending money on them. These women are used to guys buying them presents. These women are used to guys taking them to the fastest places they can afford. So don't do that. If you meet a woman, and she says, oh, she's been here. She's done there. She's done that. It sounds like, oh, well, I better do that. And she may even mean for you to do that. Don't. Because you are just another guy. The best date I ever went on. And I want you guys to remember this. Because this is a 100% factual story. I met a, a, a I guess they're called biracial girls now. Uh, she's half black and half white. Her, um, I, I won't say her name, but, but she'll know the story if she ever hears it. 
She's walking down by my house. And the only reason I stopped her because I thought she was my ex-girlfriend. And I had seen her in a while because the, my ex-girlfriend had a similar outfit and hat on all the time. It was like her kind of, I'm not going to wear outfit. And I seen her with it. And I was like, hey, blank. And she's like, came over and we talked. And we went in my house and we talked for an hour. Got her number. Waited the three days. Like I always tell you, text her. She came over my house, spent the night. This is uh, back in the day when I um, I uh, wasn't doing as good as financially. I had just paid all my bills. And I literally, and I'm not kidding you, had a 20 to my name. On a scale of 1 to 10, this woman, let me just tell you what she looked like so you can understand how beautiful she was. She was alpha widowed by Warren G, the rapper. Those are from Noah Bone by the 90s. No, I'm talking about. Uh, he's Dr. Dre's brother. And she was married to an NFL player and had two kids by him. For nine, and the NFL player played in the NFL for nine years. And she was married to him for 12. And she, um, she was two years younger than me. And she could pass for 25 without trying. Perfect body and a natural triple D. And a, a dress size six. Beautiful in every way. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is important. So I, she came over to my house. I had a 20. She had 40 bucks. And why she had 40 bucks and she had all this? Because, well, you know, she left her lavish lifestyle to chase the pookies and the Ray Rays, as I found out later. So we took the $60. We went, bought all, all of it on liquor because <laughs> I had some food. And we cooked some food and we got drink. We got drunk as she spent the night in my house. The next morning, we woke up with, and we drank the rest of the liquor up for breakfast. <laughs> After that, we was broke and we was like, uh-oh, we're going to have to get to know each other. F that. So I remember back in my day how we used to get liquor when I was in high school. And we used to go down to the bus stop with pretty girls and have the pretty girls bum money for the bus. And it would always work because they would get more money than us. We literally went down to the bus stop. This woman, who was married to, to an NFL player and was alpha widowed by Warren G and probably had all kinds of sugar daddy, we sat at that bus stop for 15 minutes, got 30 bucks, and bought liquor <laughs> and went back to having a blast. The point of this story is this. She ain't never had an experience like that in her life. When we got back to my house, we so we went to the bus stop, went to the liquor store, and walked back to my house. Literally, as soon as we shut the door. Exactly. Why? Because I gave her an experience she never, ever had. And that's how you get women who are eights, nines, and tens. Because... They are so used to guys throwing at them, money at them, it becomes boring. I will tell this to any man who asks me, how do they get a beautiful woman? And I will end with this. An 8, 9, or 10. Well, let me put it like this. I'll just put it the way I would. I will always say the easiest woman to sleep with is an 8, 9, or 10 but especially a 10 because they never been told no. Let me explain. A 10 says to me, Hey, Puffy, could you give me some money to get my hairs and nails done? My response is always the same. No. End. C. Final part of today's episode. Part two to yesterday's episode. What do you do to get the interest of an 8, 9, or 10? So let me start briefly going over what happened, talked about yesterday. Then I will get into today. So what you want to do is create pre-selection. Now pre-selection is this. If you are interested in a girl who's a 6, you have to let her see you with a girl that's a 6 or above. 
7, 7 or above. An 8, it really doesn't matter after an 8 because a 10 will still give credit to an 8 and an 8 will always give credit to a 9 and 9 will give credit to a 10 and vice versa. But if she's a 6, you have to be with a 6 or above, 7, 7 or above, 8 plus. It really doesn't matter because an 8 and a 10, they, eh, I mean, you know, sometimes people will see an 8 where they'll see a 10 and some people see a 10 where they'll see an 8. But the point is, she has to be on her level or higher. Then what you do is you tell your friend, and what you do is you just, I always say be 100% honest. You tell your cousin, your sister, your friend, your coworker, whoever it is, hey, there's this girl that I have a crush on. Oh, I want to get her number. I want to get it. She works at Starbucks, Walmart. It doesn't matter. Wherever she works, who cares? And what you do is you go to that place and you order whatever you order. Now, say you are below this woman's standard, but she sees you with this girl who's will just go with an eight or above. She'll say, oh, he's with an eight or above. That's interesting. Now you just become interesting. That woman who saw you as invisible will never see you as invisible again. I promise you that. So you go into the place and you order whatever you order. Now, before you go in there, you let the girl know that she's going to pay. That is very important. The reason why you want that, I will explain. Now, you can give her the money in advance or you can tell her you'll pay her when he's done. It doesn't matter. But she will take the check. So this girl you are crushing on comes over to the table and she'll probably ask, is there be separate checks? And you say no. Then she'll come back and she'll probably hand the check to you. Now, you make sure that when she hands the check to you that the girl knows, say no. Make her make a big stink about it. You make her let her know that this is the point. Hey, don't worry about it. I'm paying the bills here. He, you know what I mean? Make, make her make the girl know that she's going to pay. After that, that girl will not only say, wait a minute. This guy, not only is he, she's beautiful, way beautiful than he is. She's paying. A woman's brain is going to go to one thing. Well, he must be packing. Never forget, if a woman sees another woman paying, she will always assume you're packing. That is a fact. And if she's assuming that you're packing, then she wants to attack it. This is a fact that you must understand. This is how when you see a guy who is looks like me, with an 8, 9, or 10. You always assume that he has money. And so do women. But when you, when a woman that you assuming that a man has money is why he got that beautiful woman, sees that beautiful woman reaching in her purse, then human nature kicks in. Well, he's not good looking. He ain't got no money. That only leaves one thing. He has that magic stick. And if that's in her mind, she must find out. And it works for girls who are ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, six, sevens, and especially eight, nines, and tens. Because they are so sick of the guys coming at them with money. And the pretty boys and the famous people that an average looking guy that could just give her a good twirl is something interesting. Now, will she wife you up? Probably not. Will she be seen in public with you? Definitely not. But you got the picture. And if she's a freak, you might even get some video. And I guarantee you this. After she goes out to that fancy dinner. Sure, she, some girls might still hang out with him and have a little fun with him. But after he leaves, she might still need a little more fun. And she'd be like, you know what? I'm bored. I'm going to come. It's Saturday night. I'm, I already went out, had a couple drinks. He came by. He lasted for 30 seconds as always. I, I'm bored. Call this Uber. See what old Puff doing. And I'm headed over there. And that's how it works. I will go into this more detail because there will be a part three on Monday. And the part three is going to shock you. Because the part three isn't about the eight, nine, or ten. The part three 
as about the friend that's helping you out. This is Puffy. Vegas baby. One million followers on YouTube before I turn 50. I want you to know I love you all. Peace!